we are observing Purushottam Brata. Yesterday we finished the article by Srila Bhakti Nuttakur. There he quoted from Naradiya Puran. For those who are Svanishta practitioners, those who are following according to scriptural injunctions, following Varna Ashram Dharma, they will, they will follow. And then there are those who are initiated in one of the four bona fide sampradaya, and they are following Purushottam Brata as per the instruction of their gurus or acharyas, their superior type and supreme type are Nirapeksha Bhaktas, those who have already attained one-pointed devotion to Krishna in some specific intimate, sweet, delightful relation with him. They are following that Raga mark. They are topmost. They perform Kirtan and Smaran and take Prasad. They are following and according to Krishna's desire means according to the order of that your superior Brajabasi, they will do service 24 hours of Krishna. So they outwardly you will not see them following the rules of Svanishta stage and also not of Parinishtita stage. They are independent. They are only following instructions of that Brajabasi and doing seva, they are seva 24 hours a day according to Lila and taking prasad. For Parinishtita, there is some routine regulation like this, but also uh, not like Svanishtas. Svanishtas, they have all these rules and regulations. They are to follow. So I will now read from this Naradiya Puran. So you keep in mind what is said here is meant for Svanishta practitioners, but we are also applying some things, as Gurudev told, uh, this Govardhana Dharang Pande mantra and some other things. And we are hearing the glories of Purushottam Mant as is described in scripture. Uh, Bhaktana Thakur took from there. So I will mostly, I will read because it is um, easy to understand. Once upon a time, thousands of sages came together in the holy place called Naimisharanya to perform sacrifice. To their very good fortune, the great sage Sutta Goswami who had been traveling to different pilgrimage sites, arrived there along with his disciples. The sages present were very enlivened to see him. They all stood up immediately to pay their respects to the great sage, offered him a very nice vyasas, vyasasan, and requested him with folded hands to sit down on it. Vyasasan means that seat of vyasa. The sages of Naimisharanya said to Sutta Gosami with folded hands, O Sutta Ji, all of us are humbly requesting you to please tell us something about the wonderful activities and pastimes of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. There are many thousands of such narrations, but we want to listen to the most perfect one by following which we can all be delivered from this material ocean and return back to Godhead. Hearing the request made by these sages, headed by Shona Karishi, Sutta Gosami began to speak. O sages, please listen to me. I... One second... I first went to Pushkaratirtha, that is one holy place. Then after visiting thousands of other holy places, I reached Hastinapur, that is now Delhi in India. 
There, on the bank of the Ganges, I saw thousands of sages sitting together with Parikit Maharaj. Just then, the great sage Shukadev Gosami appeared, and all the sages present paid him proper respect by rising from their seats with folded hands. All the sages anonymously offered the Lotus Vyasasan, that seat, to Shukadev Gosami, which was meant for the speaker who would speak Krishna Kata to Parikit Maharaj. Gosami said, O sages, I have just come from Hastinapur where I heard the whole Srimad Bhagavatam from the lotus mouth of Shukadev Gosami. So now I will tell you about the all attractive activities and pastimes of the Lord. Now we are reading in Bhagavatam, Sutta Gosami, this is same Sutta Gosami. He was hearing from Shukadev and then he narrated to these sages, Shonakadi Rishis. Once, long ago, Sri Narada Muni reached Badrik Ashram, that is in Himalaya, the residence of Lord Narayan Rishi. The river Alakananda was flowing down from his lotus feet. Narada paid his obeisances to Narayan and prayed, O Lord of the demigods, O ocean of mercy, O master of creation, you are all truthful, the essence of all truths. And so I am paying my obeisances unto you. O Lord, in this material world, all living entities are busily engaged in sense gratification. They have all forgotten the ultimate goal of life. Therefore, please explain something which will be helpful both for householders and sages, means renouncements, in the renounced order like me. Something that will help us attain self-realization and return back to Godhead. Hearing the sweet words of Narada, Lord Narayan smiled. He said, O Narada, please listen to narrations about the supremely pious pastimes of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna, for they will diminish all sinful reaction. O Narada, you already know of all the activities of the Supreme Lord, but for the benefit of others, you are asking me again. So now I will tell you about the glories of the sacred Purushottam Mant, which is fully potent to grant not only all material happiness, but also qualify one to return back to Godhead at the end of life. Narada Ji inquired, O Lord, I have heard the glories of all months, including Kartik, Chaitra, etc. But which month is this Purushottam month? O Ocean of Mercy, please tell me all about this sacred month. What is the way to glorify this month? What should I do in this month? How should I take bath? give in charity, etc. Oh, what should I chant? Whom should I worship? Should I observe fasting in this month? Please tell me everything in detail. Sutta Gosami said, O oh, sages, after hearing all these questions from Narada, Lord Narayan began to speak from his moon-like lotus mouth. 
O Narada, I am going to tell you something which was previously explained by Lord Shri Krishna to Maharaj Yudhishthir. <coughs> Once Dharma Raja Yudhishthir lost everything, his empire, his palace, and even his chaste wife Draupadi to Duryodhan in a gambling match. You know, this is in Mahabharata. At that time, Draupadi was insulted by Dushasan in front of the whole royal assembly. But when Dushasan had tried to strip Draupadi naked, she was saved from such a dangerous situation by Lord Shri Krishna. You remember, <coughs> our Gurudev used to say about this, when they wanted to strip her naked, then there were so many kings there. And Draupadi, when she was rescued by Krishna, after she told Krishna, why you came so late? Then Krishna said, why, why are you saying I came late? I called you from before, but you came very late. Then Krishna said, no, I came immediately. May I explain? Then Draupadi said, yes. This is to give us teaching. So, Krishna said, it is true that you were chanting my name, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. You were chanting, calling me. But you were thinking in your mind that surely uh, Bhishma will help me because it is in the assembly of kings. Surely he will do something. So you did not actually call me. You were calling me by mouth, but in your mind you were taking shelter of Bhishma and then other kings and then like this. Then when no one did anything, then you grabbed your sari with both your hands. You were saying my name, but you in your thinking, I will protect myself. So Krishna said, why I will come? Before you were calling me and you were thinking that king will save me, so why I should come? Then you were thinking, I will protect myself. Then you lifted one hand, but with one hand you still hold your sari. Only when you lifted your both hands and you really you took my shelter, you called me taking my shelter, then immediately I appear, I, I appear there in the form of your sari. I became unlimited sari, so they could not strip you. Is it not that I came immediately when you actually really called me? And Draupadi said yes. So our Gurudev told like this, that uh, Krishna knows everything. So when calling him, we should not have any other desire or any other shelter or something. We really have to call Krishna to satisfy him, then immediately Krishna will appear. If he's not appearing, means there is some defect in our surrender. So here, but in another instance, you know, Draupadi was also uh, in an awkward position because Durvasari, she wanted to take Prasad, but she had not, nothing left because already she took Prasad. That time she called Krishna, took shelter, then Krishna immediately came because taking shelter of him. Then Krishna said, you give me that one small particle of shak, you, you did not clean properly the pot, you give me that. Then Krishna took and he said, trip toast me, I am satisfied. Then all other sages, Durvas, everyone, they were satisfied. No one felt any need to take any food. So the point is, Krishna is always ready to rescue us, <clears throat> but we are not taking his shelter, actually, sincerely. If we would, immediately Krishna will come, like to Gajendra and so many other examples. So here, uh, yes. after this incident, when Draupadi was rescued there, Yudhishthir Maharaj, along with his brothers and wife, left his kingdom and lived in Kamyaka forest. That is Kamyavan in Brindavan. Once Shri Krishna 
son of Devaki, visited the Pandavas in that forest. All the Pandavas, including Draupadi, were very happy to see their lord, and they forgot their painful forest life immediately. They felt enriched with a new life just by taking Krishna's darshan. They paid their obeisances at their lord's lotus feet. Seeing the miserable living condition of the Pandavas, Lord Sri Krishna became very upset. And at the same time, he became very angry towards Duryodhan. It appeared as if the Lord was going to destroy the whole universe. And so the Pandavas became fearful and all began to pray to the Lord in a humble mood. Listening to the humble prayers of Arjuna, the Lord composed himself and said, O oh Arjuna, being very pleased with all of you, Pandavas, and being controlled by your devotion and friendship towards me, I will now tell you about the wonderful history of Purushottam Mant. <clears throat> Krishna himself is telling to Pandavas. And this story is uh, Narayan is telling to Narada. <clears throat> and Sutta Goswami is telling to those sages. So Krishna here is telling, O oh Arjuna, once upon a time, by the arrangement of providence, an extra month came to this world. Everyone took this month to be most inauspicious and even saw it as a stool-like month, impure. Just as one should not touch stool, so this month was also seen as untouchable. So here, by the arrangement of providence, the extra month means that lunar and solar month have to be harmonized. You heard about this. So this month was seen as untouchable. It was constantly unprotected and blasphemed and rejected by everyone as an improper time for any religious and auspicious activities. Being so rejected by all human beings and constantly hearing only bad words and blasphemy, this extra man became very sad. She came to Baikunta, our Gurudev also told, it is she transcendental goddess behind this month, behind everything consciousness is there, conscious being, so she, it, uh, this month is she. She came to Baikunta to explain her sorrowful situation to the Lord. Seeing Lord Vishnu on his Singhasana or Naren, she fell down at his lotus feet in a mood of sorrow and grief. Tears were falling profusely from her eyes. She started praying to the Lord, O ocean of mercy, I have come to you helpless. I have been rejected and blasphemed by all people of the world. Please protect me. Please show me your mercy. Please don't be indifferent towards me. Saying these words, the extra month continued crying in front of Lord Vishnu and sat down before him in a dejected mood. Seeing the humble and pitiable position of the extra month, Lord Vishnu became very merciful towards her. He told her, Do not lament. I shall give you protection from all your miseries. Please stop crying. It is not proper to lament after taking shelter at my lotus feet. Being so consoled by the Lord, the extra month began speaking in open-hearted language. O oh Lord, you know all my painful condition. No one is in a more miserable situation in these three worlds than I. First of all, all other months, years, days, nights, directions, etc., are being protected by you, 
and so they are always moving fearlessly in their unique, charming moods. But I don't have any name, nor any protector, nor a husband to give me shelter. All the demigods and human beings have rejected me for any auspicious activities. For this reason, O oh Lord, I want to die immediately. O oh Narad, this extra month repeatedly said, I want to die, I want to die, I want to die. Then she fainted at the feet of the Lord. Being requested by Lord Vishnu, Garuda, you know, carrier of Vishnu, Garuda started fanning the extra month. And after some time, she got up and began to speak again. O oh Lord of the universe, I am in need of your shelter, so please protect me. Lord Vishnu told the extra month, O oh child, please don't lament. All of your miserable conditions will be finished very soon. Get up and come with me to Golok Brindavan, which is even unattainable to great yogis. Goloka is the abode of Lord Sri Krishna. Here, Lord Sri Krishna is in his two-handed form, surrounded by gopis and enjoying his eternal pastimes. The Supreme Lord Sri Krishna of Goloka will deliver you from all miseries. Please come with me. Speaking in this way, Lord Vishnu took Malamas or extra month. Malamas means stool-like or dirty, to Goloka by catching her by the hand. From a distant place, Lord Vishnu and the extra month observed the effulgence of Goloka. This dazzling effulgence automatically forced Malamas to close her eyes. Therefore, keeping the extra month behind him, Lord Vishnu proceeded farther until he reached the main gate. There, the doorkeeper paid his respects to him. Having reached the supreme abode, Lord Vishnu met Lord Sri Krishna, who was surrounded by many devoted gopis. Lord Vishnu, who is the husband of Ra Rama Devi, that is Lakshmi, paid his obeisances to Lord Sri Krishna. Then he made the extra month also offer her obeisances at the lotus feet of Lord Sri Krishna, even though she was crying loudly. Immediately Sri Krishna asked, Why is she crying? She is in Golok Brindavan. Why is she crying? Hearing these words from Lord Sri Krishna, Lord Vishnu got up from his seat and started explaining the whole miserable condition of the extra month. He begged him to please protect this unprotected man. There is no one except you, Lord Krishna, who can save this extra man from her hellish condition and give her full protection. Having said these words, Lord Vishnu remained standing in front of Lord Krishna with folded hands. Then Sutta Goswami continued to speak. They are one and the same person, Vishnu, Naren, and Krishna, but doing such lila. Actually, Naren is also attracted to Krishna. He's always worshipping. So here, uh, Vishnu remained in front of Krishna with folded hands. Then Sutta Goswami continued to speak. O sages, Lord Vishnu took his seat and Lord Krishna spoke very confidential words to him. Listen carefully, for I am now going to share those words with all of you. Then Lord Purushottam Shri Krishna said, O oh Vishnu, you have done a very great deed by bringing this extra man to me. You will become even more famous for performing this act because you have accepted this Malamas. I will also accept her. I shall make this poor extra month just like me in quality, fame, 
opulence, realization, success, and in giving benediction to devotees. This month will become equally potent to me. I am bestowing all of my divine qualities in this abused month. Named after me, this month will be famous as Purushottam month in this world. O Janardan, now that she has imbued my qualities, I myself will become the husband and protector of this Purushottam month. And being equal to me, this month will be the master of all other months. Now this month will become worshipable by one and all. Everyone should pay their obeisances to her. Everyone should worship her. This month is equally as powerful as me to give any type of benediction to its observer. I am making this month desire free. Unlike other months, which are full of some desire or another. The worshipper of this month will be able to burn all his past sinful reactions to ashes and after enjoying a blissful life in the material realm, he will return back to Godhead. O Garuda Dvaja Naren, Lord Shri Krishna continued, my Goloka is unattainable to the performers of austerities, Mahatmas engaged in pious activities, to people who maintain celibacy, or to those who fast their whole life's duration. But just by observing Purushottam month and becoming a devotee, one can easily cross over this material ocean and return back to Godhead. Observance of this Purushottam month is the best of all austerities. Just as a farmer produces a rich harvest by planting seeds in nicely cultivated land, so an intelligent man who practices devotional service towards the Supreme Lord in this Purushottam month will enjoy a blissful life while in this world and after leaving his body, he will return back to Godhead. An unfortunate, ignorant man who does not perform any japa, does not give any charity, does not pay respect to Lord Shri Krishna and his devotees, does not behave properly to brahmanas, makes enmity with others, and who blasphemes the Purushottam month will go to hell for an unlimited period. Lord Shri Krishna continued, how can a person make his life successful unless he performs devotional service in this Purushottam month? A person who is fully engaged in sense gratification and does not give any special importance to this sacred month becomes the best candidate for hell. All human beings should perform some devotional service in this Purushottam month by taking a bath in a holy river, worshipping me, Shri Krishna by chanting my holy name, giving in charity. A fortunate person who follows my instructions and observes this Purushottam month properly and in a faithful way worships me will attain fame, opulence and a good son in this very life. And after enjoying a happy life, he will return back to Gologdham. By following my instructions, everyone should worship this sacred month. I have made it the best among all other months, O husband of Ramadevi, Vishnu. Give up all kinds of mental speculation about this extra month. Just take this Purushottam month with you to your Baikunta abode. After narrating this brief history of the Purushottam month, Lord Shri Krishna glanced very mercifully upon Yudhishthira and Draupadi and then began speaking to Arjuna. This we will hear tomorrow, what Krishna told to Yudhishthira and Draupadi and all Pandavas. It is there in Bhakti Thakur's article. So then further it will come.
you will find the Veda, Purana, and Kavya. Veda and the Upanishads, they are instructing like Father. You do this, do this, do this, like this, ordering, that style. But Puranas, they are telling like a friend in uh, in uh, encouraging manner, through stories, in encouraging manner as a friend. To take a, and then Kavya means po poetry, transcendental poetry. They are speaking like a wife in a very pleasing way. They give instructions. It is mentioned in Shastra. The three types of conveying same message, but type or way is a bit different. So Puranas, the all stories, but the ultimate point is to make us devoted to Krishna. And then we are reading uh, Bhagavatam. Yesterday we heard that verse that if someone will perform jnana process, then by that he cannot attain fulfillment. His only gain will only be trouble, like beating the empty husk. You cannot get rice from that. So everyone wants fulfillment, ananda. That is possible to get only by devotional service to Krishna, not by jnana. By getting that in personal liberation, you cannot get fulfillment. Vyasa, they played this pastime. He was unfulfilled. Then Narat, sarcastically, he asked him, Oh, Narat, why you are still unhappy? You already got Brahmananda, bliss of Brahman. Why you are still unhappy? No jiva can be happy with that because we all have eternal relation with Krishna. So unless that is fulfilled, one cannot be fulfilled. Shukadev Goswami also was in Brahmananda, but became attracted to Krishna by hearing from Vyasadev Bhagavatam and took service of Krishna. So here, Vishwana Chakravati commentary. One cannot, no, uh, one can achieve success by performing any one of the methods of bhakti, such as hearing and chanting, and remembering all you know nine. The Nrishinga Puran confirms this. Since one can easily attain the original personality of Godhead by worshipping him with devotion, using leaves, flowers, fruits and water, which are freely available, why does one need to endeavor for liberation separately? Even if you are poor, you, this is easily available everywhere. So with devotion, if you offer Krishna says in Gita, I will accept. So if one performs devotion, automatically he will be liberated. So what is the use of endeavoring separately by the gyan, by detachment and all this. Though this is true, those who reject bhakti and pursue the path of speculative knowledge, jnana, only gain trouble and botheration. This is the intention of the verse. Sridhar Swami, this is commentator of Bhagavatam, ancient one, from Vishnu Swami Sampradaya, Sridhar Swami says that jnana is a dry path, whereas bhakti is a cool stream flowing like a river of honey. The word shriya or supreme benefit also refers to all the fruits of all other processes such as karma and jnana. The path of bhakti gives all these fruits and is thus called Shreya Sriti, the path of supreme benefit. The Gyanis who reject the path of auspiciousness, Shreya Sriti means this Bhakti, get only suffering, Kleshala. It is like beating a huge pile of empty husks of rice, 
the result of the effort is pain in the hands and no rise. So it is clear here Brahma is telling only by devotion one can get his all desires fulfilled, not by Gyan. That is dry. The next verse Pureha Bhuman Bahavopi Yoginas Tvat Arpitecha Nija Karma Labdaya Vibudya Bhaktieva Kato Panitaya Prapediren Jo Chuta Tegatim Param. O Almighty Lord, in the past many yogis in this world achieved the platform of devotional service by offering all their endeavors unto you and faithfully carrying out their prescribed duties. Through such devotional service, perfected by the processes of hearing and chanting about you, they came to understand you, O infallible one, and could easily surrender to you and achieve your supreme abode. In contrast, they could attain by devotional service. Bishwana Chakra is gone, is not giving any commentary here. Bishwana Chakra Thakur commentary. In the previous two verses, Brahma used negative and positive statements to establish that devotional service is the means of attaining the Lord. The present verse describes the primary activities of bhakti, namely hearing and chanting about Krishna. Brahma said, O Almighty Lord, in this world there are many who practice bhakti. Here, this yogina means bhakti yogis and offer their activities to you, engaging all their senses in works of devotion. Being fully absorbed in bhakti with faith and disregarding Varna Ashram, they engage in hearing and chanting only about you. By the prema bhakti, which arises from hearing and chanting, Kato Panitaya, they realize your forum, qualities and pastimes, and thus attain your eternal association in this spiritual world. Here, Vishnu uh, Chakra Thakur saying they reject Varna Ashram Dharma in the sense they are not misidentifying with these three gunas, I am Brahmana, Kshatriya, Vaishya. So they, they have realized I am eternal servant of Krishna, so my duty is to serve him. So they are doing all these devotional practices of hearing, chanting, remembering, and all other services, archan, everything they are doing. They, they will also do Varna Ashram, but not as those who are Varna Ashram is with false ego. They will do their uh, for only for their maintenance. They will do what is suitable job for them, honestly, to maintain their life. And what is favorable in Varna Ashram Dharma to their devotion, they, they will accept. If there is something unfavorable, they will reject. They will not accept, do. So only those things which are favorable. So for the maintenance of their life, they are following certain um, this, but not with false ego. I am Kshatriya, I am this. No. And because we are not now liberated soul and living in this world, so Deva Varna Asha and Dharma also have to be applied, Prabhupada told, for maintenance. Uh, so then if someone is Brahmachari or Sanyasi, then they will beg and Vana Prastis. Householders, they will earn like this. Again, a further commentary of Bishan Chakritakur, this verse can also be taken as a rejection 
of the yoga process after having rejected jnana in the previous verses. <coughs> yoga means here Ashtanga Yoga. So that is also rejected. After practicing yoga for a long time, one may come to the platform of devotional service and attain firm devotion at the lotus feet of Krishna. So he will have to uh, accept service of Krishna, surrender to him and service. Then next verse. Tapi Bhuman Mahima Gunasyate Vibodum Arhati Amalantar Atmabi Avi Kriyat Swanu Bhavat Arupato Hi Ananya Bodhyat Mataya Na Chanyata. Non devotees, however, cannot realize you in your full personal feature. Nevertheless, it may be possible for them to realize your expansion as the impersonal supreme by cultivating direct perception of the self within the heart. But they can do this only by purifying their mind and senses of all conceptions of material distinctions and all attachment to material sense objects. Only in this way will your impersonal feature manifest itself to them. You remember Krishna also told similarly to Arjuna in Bhagavad Gita when he was asking him. So Krishna told they will also attain me, means in my impersonal feature, but that is very difficult and you have to practice this sort of vairagya. It's a very difficult process. But in devotional service, you just have to engage everything in the service of Krishna, in his deity forum or chanting his name like this. Then automatically you will get liberated from Maya and also you will positively attain your eternal identity, real self, in relation to Krishna and his service, eternal service. In, Golub, in this world, while still staying in this world, to Diti and to Vaishnavas, Bhagavatam, Holy Name, all this. And then when you will leave the means even before, if you will get your Sruf Siddhi, a realization of real self, then inside your heart you will also serve in Raga Mark, Raga Nuga, Raga Mark, in Lila, that Seva you will do inside your heart while staying in this world. Then when Krishna wills, he will uh, take you back home, back to Godhead. So you need to separately endeavor for any kind of liberation. That is why here Krishna, as we heard from Naradiya Puran told, one who will worship me, he will be happy in this world also. And then he will go back to me. Why? Because devotees, when they are engaged in the service of Krishna in this world, in this world also they are tasting the happiness, the bliss of serving Krishna. Of course, if you still have certain anarthas and attachment and this, then you will not get so much happiness like that Rupa Goswami gave that Example, if someone has jaundice, then he cannot taste sweetness or sugar candy immediately, but gradually he can taste more and more as that disease is removed. So according to the degree of our anartas, all this removed, that much we can get taste. And if someone is a pure devotee, even while in this world, he is fully happy, like Ambrish Maharaj, Pralad Maharaj and other devotees. So we have to worship Purushottam Bhagavan. Tomorrow we will further hear.